Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're back over here at our cabin, guys. And today is the day that we start installing our rain catchment system on one corner of the cabin. Now we have a 300 gallon tote that was uh, gifted to us by a subscriber this past summer. And we plan on using that on the corner of our cabin. Now I'm gonna take here and I'm going to show you what we have going on. I've actually built the frame uh, that this is going to sit on. So I would like to, I'm going to show you the frame, I'm going to show you how I built it, what my thoughts are, and we're going to see how this thing actually goes together and see if we can make this happen. Here we have the frame system that I built. I have four by fours that I actually installed in the ground. They're concreted in, uh, about two foot deep. I've put some X braces on the front and the back of it there to keep it from going from side to side. I kind of saddle notch these in on all four corners of it and what we have here this is our downspout coming off of the top of our cabin up here we're going to be taking that loose because right now i have this thing setting in a five gallon bucket so that when it rains we have a little bit of water here to cabin to water plants with and stuff like that but it's time guys that we move out and we start venturing into bigger things because now we have the off-grid garden over here and we got to have a lot of water for that because believe it or not where everybody else has been getting rain we haven't been getting that much we just get a little sprinkle every now and then maybe a five or ten minute shower and that's it and our garden needs a little more than that so i'm going to show you here's the tote that we have let me see if i can move around here the sun's going to probably play a factor in this but just remember it's laying on its side now i could not find anything that would screw onto this tank here i've looked everywhere i just cannot find anything this came with it so what i done was i went and bought a i bought a two by two rubber uh, sewage adapter here and i clamped this thing on to a uh, a reducer here i slid it up in it and I actually clamped it on it with a piece of PVC pipe in there. And then I put another reducer on the inside of it down to a three quarter inch. Uh, I'm sorry, down to, well, that is a three quarter, I believe. Or, uh, yeah, down to a three quarter inch uh, pipe there. We're gonna be actually taking a piece of PVC three quarter inch pipe and putting in this here and putting a uh, water faucet adapter onto the end of it here so that when we get this thing filled up, I can just come up here and the amount of pressure I need will be regulated by how much I turn this ball valve here. I'll turn it just, you know, the least amount I turn it, the least amount of pressure is so that I don't have to worry about too much pressure in any one given time. This thing is mounted about 50 something inches up off the ground. So that's going to give me a little bit more pressure as we work you know towards getting water out to the garden it is higher than any part of my garden anywhere around here so it will always flow we're going to probably put a manifold system on this and run some water hoses over to our gardens and we're probably going to start watering our gardens from this 300 gallon tote we have here now this thing has a metal frame system that goes with it and it has a place for me to run my forks up under it with my pallet uh, pallet forks so that I can actually pick this thing up and I can move it around. So with that being said, this steel frame system, I have it designed where it will sit right on top of these runners right here. And that should be enough to hold it with these all concreted in the ground and these X braces put on here to kind of keep it steady. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come off of the roof here with what's called a first flush system up at the top up here. I'm gonna come down off of that into a first flush system. It'll come all the way down and then it'll come back up and seal off and the water will come out of it and come over into the top of this tank. Now this tank has a lid on the top of it with a two inch fitting and uh, threaded fitting on top of it there. So I can screw a two inch PVC male adapter into the top of that so that my water can go into it so guys that's the plan we're hoping and praying we can make this work so that we have water to water our gardens because see look here you see that garden over there we got we got this garden right here 
Below that terrace row right there is a whole nother garden, like 150 feet long right there. And then when I come around right here, I'm looking right here, and I have a whole nother garden right here going all the way up. This is all of our alliums. Uh, Wanda has tomato plants, pepper plants, asparagus, our multiplying onions. We have our Egyptian walking onions up there. I mean, we have down here, we have uh, ras uh, blackberries. On further down, we have a fruit orchard. You come over here, we have fruit trees here, here. In the distance on this hillside is a peach orchard. And when you come back up in here behind the cabin, there's a whole row of fruit trees all up through here. There's apricots, there's apples, uh, there's a fig right here. Uh, we have a banana tree right here. You turn around, there's a big old huckleberry tree right here. And look here on this huckleberry tree. Yep, right there, look at that. It's about half green, look at that. What do you call that, a yin and a yang? <laughs> It's half green and half black. That's amazing. But look, they're all over it here. They're turning. Here's another one right here. Look at that. Guys, these things need water bad here at Deep South Homestead because it just hasn't rained. I wonder how it tastes. Mm, boy, it tastes good too. Man. You walk around this tree here, you can look and see. See all them huckleberries coming on it? Look down in here. They're starting to get ready. And just look at how many of berries they are on this tree. Now you can't really tell that just looking at it because you see all the green leaves. But when I stop long enough that you can actually start looking at the berries, look at them. They're everywhere. And while they're at this stage, I need to get some water from this rain catchment system over here and see if I can't make this happen. So guys, time to get back to work. Okay, now we have it up on our platform here. We've got it all braced up. Everything's well. This is the side that our water is going to be coming out of right here. We'll be able to open this valve up, let the water out, close it back off. Now to get up and to start building the, uh, the downspout system, we're going to put the first flush system on. I've got to go see what I've got to work with on that and see if I can come up with the fittings and the parts to be able to install the first flush, the overflow system, and then the system to go into the tank. So that's going to be the next build. And guys, we got lots of gardens around the off-grid cabin here, and the only problem is we don't have any water for them. We have to bring water over in five-gallon buckets to water the garden. We have to bring water in five-gallon buckets to flush the toilet because we have no water over here. And plus, it's dry. It hasn't rained. We have one little five-minute rain here this past week, and that's been it for weeks. So it's time to put in the rain catchment system at the off-grid cabin. Now I'm going to take a ladder here in just a minute, and I'll get up high and explain some things to you. This thing has took me several days to do because we are not doing just this at Deep South Homestead. I'm actually got gardens going on. I got to move my cattle. I've got the greenhouse to take care of. We got several days involved in this, just a little bit each day. Today is April the 2nd. So a lot of y'all been asking, um, telling me, would you please put the date on the video whenever you do it? So today it's April the 2nd. So you know, I've been working on this for three or four days now, and I finally finished it. The first thing I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to show you the gutter system up at the top and how it comes down into it. We're going to talk about 
the first flush system first. Now if we take a look up, you can see the gutter system up at the top. The downspout runs into the PVC system and the first line it makes a straight shot down in 2 inch PVC into 4 inch PVC. Now the 4 inch PVC is 7 foot long. There is a formula online that you can look at that tells you the square footage of your roof and then it tells you how much first flush system you need as far as length of pipe, diameter of pipe, and all this kind of stuff. And mine is just a little right at where it needs to be at because I didn't have any more room to work with. So this is what we have. I didn't want to come out with a dual one. I just decided to leave it as a single one. Now the first flush system, let's look at how it works. As the water falls in here through the two inch, goes into the four inch, it comes all the way down. And when we get to the bottom down here, we have what's called a clean out at the bottom. Now what we'll do during when it's, when it's raining, let me show you what, how this thing actually works. If I can get her back out of here. This here is just a standard Coca-Cola bottle. The lid's on it good and tight so it can't get full of water. This bottle will actually sit in here, up inside this like that. This cap will screw on here as it rains and water pours into this, that bottle will begin to float. As this fills up with water, it'll float up. And as it floats up, it will get all the way up to here. And when it reaches right yonder, the bottle cannot go any higher. It will actually close the hole off at the top. And what this system is for is when it starts raining, all the trash that's on the roof, all the trash that's in the gutter will come into this pipe first. This is like a filter system for the rain catchment tank here. Now once that bottle seals that off, then the water is diverted from there over into the tank. Now I'm going to get up on top of the tank and we're going to take a look at that. For a successful rain catchment system, you want to have a good screen system on your gutters. Now I've got probably, this. they say this is one of the better ones. We have it down the whole length of this. And you can see here, if this is an aluminum grid system here. And as we come across, you see how this is a steep roof. The water falls into this right here. And it filters off a lot of the big stuff. But now right now, down inside here, you see this little oak pollen stuff right here? That stuff has fell down into the gutter here through these little tiny holes. We're going to go ahead and take the uh, bottom part off of the first flush system when it first starts raining and let it wash a lot of that, that trash out of there because that gutter's got a lot of that little tiny stuff in it. And then we'll put the cap back on it and let it begin to fill up from that point forward. But now here we are. We're up on the roof. Here's the downspout right here coming down. We're going into a, this is a special fitting made for the down spout to go into right there. As we come down, we talked about the first flush system right down here. When it fills up, that bottle will seal off right here. And once it seals off, the water will build up and begin to come across. And as it comes across here, it will go into the top of our 300 gallon tank here. Now, when this tank fits full of water, what's going to happen at that point is the water will begin to back back up in this here and then it will come up right here and it will go out this is an overflow pipe here and it will run down and go on the outside the tank now this right here if you'll notice i'm trying to get the camera where we can get both of them lined up this one right here is lower than the top of this right here is so there's a possibility that during a massive down flood, I mean that this could overflow right here a little bit, but most of the water will probably go out the overflow right here. But that's how this system works, guys. Now remember, the bottle seals off here. As it seals off, the water has nowhere to go. If it starts filling up, it runs across, comes over here, goes down in the top of the tank. When the tank fills up, the water begins to back up. It rises up into here takes off through there, and this is overflow on the outside of the tank. 
down there. Now this is 300 gallons of water that we have here to water our gardens with. Now this thing is mounted four feet off the ground. Let me get here where I can show you. This system is mounted four foot off the ground. This is the overflow right here I showed you. It comes off, it overflows, it comes all the way down. And right here the water just pours out on the ground. Now we're probably going to tie onto that at some point. If we decide to add another 300 gallon tote beside this one, we will come out of this pipe up here and we will go across and we'll go into another tank over here so that when this tank fills up, it'll run over and start going into this tank filling it up. That's how we'll do it in the future. If we can just come up with another one of these tanks, this is the only one we have right now. As soon as we get another one, we have room here to do another one and then another one. We have room for three of them side by side right here. And we will tie them all together and then we'll tie this drain into this drain into this drain and they'll all work simultaneously. Now this drain here has a lever on it here that I can actually turn and open up and let the water come out of it. Guys, this is the first part of the rain catchment system on our off-grid cabin. We're also set up, as soon as we can find it, for this side of the cabin here, we have a downspout system here that comes down. Now, right now, it's just running on the ground. When we can find a large enough barrel that is not an ugly looking barrel but one that is designed to look like a barrel or a very nice looking barrel we wanted to install one on this corner there's also one on the other corner for the roof coming from the other direction over yonder we'll install two barrels here to have even more water at the off-grid cabin over here our first rain catchment system now all we got to do Let's find two or three or more of these 300 gallon totes and we will have enough water to do whatever we need here at the off-grid cabin. Guys, this water is not for drinking. Just so y'all might know, the question is going to be asked, is it potable water? The answer is no. This water here is to flush toilets and to water gardens with. Okay, guys, now that we've got the system built, all we're doing here at Deep South Homestead is waiting on rain. When the rain comes, we're excited to see how it's going to work, to see if the design is, is working like it's supposed to work, and if it fills this barrel uh, towed up and the overflow system works like it's supposed to, we're excited. And then we're going to be looking for two more of these totes, just like this one. And yes, y'all are going to ask the question, this thing is white. Yeah, it is white. Guys, we are in a shelter in place in the state of Mississippi. We can't go anywhere to get anything. And I wasn't gonna wait to install this because I don't know how long this shelter in place is gonna, how long they're gonna have it up for. We can always spray paint this sitting right where it's at. We can paint it black, that's not an issue. But right now, it's dry and we need water at Deep South Homestead. So we're gonna be emptying this thing out as fast as it fills up, I'm pretty sure. So that's the why. The main, well, that's the main reason why, let me say this, that this is still white and not black. So, thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.